So at the beginning, um, I practiced on stuff that was getting thrown out of charity shops. So it didn't matter if they broke. And a few years, a few years passed, and then the pile, broken pile, got bigger. And after two, three years, the, everything started to click. And then I was able to start fixing more than I was breaking. And um, like the different areas I was able to practice, I was quite lucky in some senses. So after a few years reverse engineering, I got to a more comfortable point. I went to London and approached every repair shop I could to try and train under and to teach me. Instead of training me, they gave me the space to practice, which I was very fortunate for, because that included Lycas, Hasselblads. So I've worked for several shops, which expanded my knowledge uh, quite extensively. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. As you saw in that intro clip, we interviewed Piero, AKA PPP from PPP Repairs. The guy's an absolute whiz. He's a very young guy. He learned so much about repairing cameras and he's doing amazing work here, helping you and I have cameras that are gonna work and kind of live on long into the future. So this podcast interview was very, very interesting. If you want to watch the entire episode, of course, click the link down below to see the entire episode. And that's available on all of the major podcasting platforms. And of course, New Classic Film is still on sale. So go ahead and get a roll if you want to go ahead and support the channel. All right, back to the episode. Let's talk about this master uh, repair person. I I'm imagining like master splinter. You know Ninja Turtles? Is that is that a thing in the UK? <laughs> I, I tell you what, it's not far off. <laughs> <laughs> so Honestly, how did you find this person? And uh, I don't know if you can say who it is, but I, you know, the more information, the better. Yeah, yeah, no. So it took me 10 years. So I've been trying to approach many a repairer, uh, older repair to train on. I didn't want the youngster annoying with them, which is fair enough. And they said I was on the right track, just keep doing it. So I kept doing it. Along the way, I met a few who gave me a little bit of guidance. And then finally, after 10 years, I've met this older repairer. He's about 75. And before he even uh, took me on or anything, I sat down in his living room and had a two hour interview uh, with him before he, he uh, made judgment on my character before taking me on. And then gradually he started to open up and now teaching me the inside out. Recently did a like a rover haul, which is exciting. That's amazing. Um, it, it sounds like a beautiful relationship because it's not just purely like the technical, you know, ins and outs, like th this person wanted to ensure, you know, it, it sounds like being a repair person is this like, it's such an important thing because film cameras literally like they, they died already, you know? So yeah. Yeah. having someone that not only knows how to do it, but like cares about it and kind of has this mission of keeping the thing alive, like that must be something that factors into your, into your head. Yeah, massively. Like, so the one really, really nice thing about this older repair is that the fact that he hasn't lost his spark. He's getting more excited about the stuff I'm talking about, all this new stuff coming out, and he wants to be younger to keep doing it again. <laughs> it's nice because it isn't just about the repairs. He said he wanted to build up a friendship as well as, and um, which is really nice. So I have lunch with him and his wife, um, and I've met his cat, or his neighbor's cat, one of the two. <laughs> it's that we've developed that relationship where we just call each other and check in on each other as well, which is quite a nice aspect to have. All right, well, that's clearly an avoidable thing. Um, yeah. maybe forget about avoidable or unavoidable. What, what are some, like, what are the things you see most often that are typical problems with cameras? So the most often, uh, recently, uh, due, like, over the past few years is just where stuff isn't lubricated. It's just drying. The grease is drying up with age and grease loses oil over, over a period of time. And, uh, because you're then running the camera dry, it becomes, it starts wearing parts on parts, metal on metal, especially is not good. And um, it just means lubrication. And then it feels like a factory again. It feels good as good as new. I was so, actually wanting to ask you, what, is, what does CLA mean? And I know lubrication is one of the L's, but how valuable is a CLA? And like, should we be doing this to all of our mechanical cameras? How often? Like, what do you recommend? So a CLA is not a lot of repairers like the term because it essentially stands for clean, lubricate, actuate. A lot of repairers prefer the term of service. Um, it's something, if your camera is mechanical, it has moving parts, metal or metal, it's just stuff will wear if it's moving. So it's like an old car. So it's good to have them fully serviced. If you haven't done it before, it's good to get done. And then you're good for another five, 10 years, if not longer. Look at some of the Hasselblads and Leicas, fully mechanical, even the Roly 35s. They just keep going and going and going. As long as they're serviced and kept, you'll, you'll know in the field, something just won't feel quite right. But as long as they're serviced, they'll keep going for a good, good few years, even decades. For someone who who knows their way around some simple basic things about you know tools and engineering whatever, how do you recommend people like take a look themselves under the hood? Like, is it worth doing that, or are there some cameras that if you own it, you should give it a try first? First of all, your video was very entertaining. I did enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs>
And um, regards to repairing, there's actually a lot of engineers entering the repair space. And what's quite interesting how they're approaching it is with their engineering like knowledge, they're able to approach stuff just like that. And they have that basic idea of um, how things go together and work and so forth. And even quite more in depth uh, knowledge in regards to some of the electronics and some repairers I know. So it's even myself sometimes. And it, that's what's quite incredible. But for those people, it's great because they would take it apart, play, they can modify it, even adapt it. And there's so many projects going on like that. But for the normal person, if uh, repairing, not even repairing, if building or taking us apart stuff doesn't come naturally, I wouldn't risk it. <laughs> Fair. Okay, fine, fine. It's just, there's so many things like, oh, range fire adjustment, that's simple. Just stick the screwdriver in there, oh, slip. And then, but it's just, and it's not as simple as that. Like with Likers, there's a, it's, there's sort of a balance between the two, a payoff between close and far distance. It's not as simple as just adjusting it. And there's so many other cameras. If you twist the wrong screw, then forget it. It's just, or you can even short circuit the whole light meter in a camera if you've got the batteries in and you're still trying to do it. So just, there's so many little things like light seals, go for it. More than happy to do that because that's just messy work. <laughs> but anything else, uh, just be wary of. Yeah, no, I, I, your answer is, makes total sense. I think in the spirit of not gatekeeping, I think there's a lot of things on the internet when it comes to photography and other skills that are gate kept. Um, and that's just annoying. But in this case, clearly this is more about like, if you, if you just don't know how to do it, like maybe learn first, maybe try to educate yourself, maybe talk to a repair person with the, before like just diving in. And also you got to be careful what you trust online. Because I, I watched like two or three things and I was like, I don't know. I was like, whatever, let's give it a shot. But clearly I, I didn't do, I didn't follow my own advice. Yeah, so like, honestly, like, if you're prepared to break your camera, do it. All by all means, go for it, because that's how I learned through reverse engineering, and it can be done. You literally can learn that way, and you can become quite successful from it over a long period of time. But like, it's, it's not the like the other thing you mentioned on YouTube videos. Not not everyone knows what they're doing online. Um, so, like, if you're looking for, like, uh, what's it, how to do things and that, um, learn camera repairs have a huge range of service manuals, but even if some of the service manuals weren't written by repairers, so they don't always make sense. But there's also projects run like camera rescue run projects, um, yeah. learn and that's probably the best way of doing it. But the, I understand where you're coming from about gatekeeping because that's one thing I ran into a lot of um, problems with when I first trying to learn, there was a lot of gatekeeping going on at the time. People not ready, which is fair enough. Like they spent decades learning just to work things out. They're not just going to hand it over. Of course. Um, ways of learning to a point and showing you're committed to what you're doing and then eventually those people or companies gatekeeping start to open up a little bit more and let you in and help they just they've been around for years and seen a lot of people come and go so i want to use the comments in this video to start a little database of local repair people in your area let us know down below where you're from where you're at and who your trusted repair person is that way all of us can have access to somebody hopefully close to us in our area if you enjoyed the video, of course, click that like button. And that's about it. Go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. All right, y'all, to the next one. I'm out.